So protests that started at the University of Columbia have spread like wildfire from the East Coast to the West Coast in the United States of America. The police in some instances, armed police in riot gear, they moved into campus across the country. Hundreds of students have been either been detained or arrested. Yale, Harvard, University of Texas, University of Southern California, University of Brown, students are up in arms in solidarity with Palestine against Israel's war on Hamas. Of course, there's also an intense debate on freedom of expression versus safety of Jewish students and teachers on campus. We get you a 360 degree perspective of that protest fire that rages across the US. I'm Gaurav Savant as always. Let's get started with the headlines on India First. The big inheritance tax showdown continues. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Rajiv Gandhi ended inheritance tax to secure Indira Gandhi's assets for the family. Congress Chief Malikarjun Bharge writes to the Prime Minister, seeks a meeting to educate him on the Congress manifesto. Sriman Rajiv Gandhi ne apni sampatti bachane ke liye pehle jo inheritance kanun tha usko samapt kiya aur khud ke paise bacha liye. Big Muslim quota war escalates in Karnataka. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates his attack, says the Congress will snatch OBC quota and offer it to Muslims. Chief Minister Siddharamaya hits back claims quota in existence for the last 20 years. Election Commission cracks the whip on hate speech, seeks a reply from the BJP and the Congress party chief over alleged poll code violations. India Today Newsbreak sets the agenda amid speculation that Rahul Gandhi may fight from Amethi after Vainad. Akhilesh Yadav drops the hint. Sources say Rahul Gandhi may file his nomination on the 1st of May. Unarmed students clashed with armed police in riot gear in some instances on horseback as protest fire spread across prestigious universities, including some Ivy League institutions across the United States. There were protests from New York to Los Angeles. Hundreds of students have either been detained, arrested or removed from campus. The students are demanding in some instances cutting off ties with Israel, divest funding from companies that fuel Israel's war on Hamas. But some of the slogans have been very alarming. We bring you more in this ground report from coast to coast. Massive crackdown on campus from coast to coast in the United States of America. In right gear, wearing helmets, police forces swoop down on the University of Southern California and detain students who were protesting against Israel's war on Hamas. Armed police urge students to return to classes, failing which some protesters and protest leaders were taken into custody. Texas state troopers were deployed at the University of Texas, Austin. At the prestigious Harvard University, pro-Palestine protesters began an encampment at the Harvard Yard to protest the suspension of the Palestine Solidarity Committee. The protesting scholars demanded the university stop taking funds from entities involved in Israel's war in Gaza. I and many other Jewish students on this campus do believe that it is our duty to step up because of our Jewish values, because we are a people who has been in diaspora for so long, because we know what it feels like to be put into shtetls. We know what it feels like to be the victims of a genocide. And we believe that when we say never again, it means never again for anyone. And when we see this happening, even if it is people who are also Jews perpetrating it, especially because it is also Jews perpetrating it, it is our job to step in and make things right. Several protesters set up tents in the Harvard Yard. 
the university has restricted access to the yard only to Harvard University ID holders. The administration has also warned of disciplinary action. I am incredibly moved by your courage and bravery as a student body in putting your bodies on the line to stand in solidarity to end the genocide that is taking place in Gaza at this moment. I have to tell you, it's been incredibly painful for the next last five days to see the discovery, while there is a discovery, of a mass grave of more than 200 Palestinians in Khan Yunus, that our media, our elected politicians, our president, every single leader is spending their time and energy in talking about the protests as if you all are not here to give voice to the genocide that is taking place in Gaza. At the Columbia University campus, students set up tents in one of the university loans and called it the Gaza Solidarity Encampment. There is considerable alarm over the kind of sloganeering on campus. Students across the country, At Yale, police arrested more than 60 protesters. A group of students began a hunger strike to pressure the Ivy League school to divest from companies that were a part of Israel's war efforts in Gaza. The Yale administration has been in the line of student fire for alleged complicity in Gaza genocide for continuing to take funds from Jewish companies. US President Joe Biden and the White House duck the question on protests and police action. The president believes that uh, free speech, debate, and non-discrimination on college campuses are important. They're important American values. And that, uh, and so he'll always be very clear, we will always be very clear about here, about that here. Students should feel safe, communities should feel safe, and we, you know, we can't, uh, we can't stay silent. There are reports of several protest tents coming up on college campus across the United States. Brown University students also demanded that the administration distances itself from entities funding Israel's war in Gaza. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hit out at the kiosk on U.S. campus and demanded that the U.S. administration do more to keep Jewish students and faculty safe on campus. What's happening on America's college campuses is horrific. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over leading universities. They call for the annihilation of Israel. They attack Jewish students. They attack Jewish faculty. This is reminiscent of what happened in German universities in the 1930s. It's unconscionable. It has to be stopped. It has to be condemned and condemned unequivocally. But that's not what happened. The response of several university presidents was shameful. Now, fortunately, state, uh, local, federal officials, many of them have responded differently, but there has to be more. More has to be done. As police crackdown intensifies, students remain defiant, even as some prestigious universities like Columbia have now decided to move their classes online. But the protesters are only threatening to intensify their presence on the streets. Bureau report, India today. When Pakistan backed separatists were active in Jammu and Kashmir, these Azadi slogans were heard during protests in the valley. Some of those students carried the Azadi slogans to some very prestigious universities in different parts of India. And now, this Azadi chant has traveled across seven seas to the United States of America. We bring you this viral Azadi slogan clip from the Columbia University. Azadi. 
And what's the latest on ground? Anna Oaks joins us from the Columbia University. Also with me for perspective on this big story is Ambassador Ashok Sajanar and Sushant Sarin, Senior Fellow at the Observer Research Foundation. But Anna, uh, what's the latest on ground in Colombia and across the United States of America? For me? Um, hi, thank you for speaking with me. Um, in the last week, um, we've seen protests popping up from, it started at Columbia and it spread to other universities in New York. In the last few days, um, we've seen protests in Texas, um, Connecticut, California. It's like really, it's really taken over. Um, it's, it's sort of, it's what everyone's talking about. Every student, every university student is it, knows people who have been involved or is involved in some way. So explain this. Of course, Colombia has a long history of protests from the Vietnam War to Israel's war in Gaza right now. But can you explain this police crackdown, police in right gear, uh, wearing those big helmets with their batons, in some instances mounted police? Is, there, is that overreaction or is that needed? Um, I, I mean, I can't speak fully to the other universities. I've been here every day and night since it started at Columbia. I can say at Columbia, um, the encampment, a small encampment of about two dozen tents started um, on Wednesday night in the middle of the night. And within 24 hours, the president of the university had called in the New York Police Department, had authorized them for the first time in 56 years to enter campus and arrest. Um, she arrested 100 students um, and many more have been suspended. Um, I mean, I, I think that it's, uh, as a, a just journalist, I can't say much of my opinion, but I can say that um, there has been no, I've seen no um, violence or threats to students um, on the campus itself that would warrant a um, police um, uh, action like, like we saw last week. Um, but and you see in Texas, I mean, yeah, sorry. So, no, so violent police action. Has that broken the morale of the students? Uh, students have been suspended, students have been detained, they've been jailed. Has that broken the morale of students? I mean, it's really amazing to see it has actually done the complete opposite. Um, can you show us around you? Can you show us around you, please? Uh, let, let's take up full screen. Can you show us around the protests, please? Yeah. Yeah, so people are very um, careful about having their faces public because um, there's been a lot of, of doxing where their identities have been shared and family, their family members have been threatened, um, scared of being suspended by the university. So um, I don't want to get too close to people, but you can see um, it's about two or three dozen tents out here. Um, and a, grad, a group of graduate students have just started their own walkout further down. Um, it's right in the middle of campus. That is the Central University, uh, Central Library. Um, this is the old library, and this is where commencement is going to start in a couple weeks. Um, so the university is really trying. We have like our bleachers up here that are, I don't know if you can see that. Um, they've set up bleachers and chairs in anticipation of commencement, which is when um, um, graduation will happen. And they're expecting tons of visitors then. So I think they're really trying to clear this up in the next, well, we'll see, as soon as possible. <laughs> Okay. Anna, stay with me for a moment. Let me quickly bring in Sushant Sareen and Ambassador Ashok Sajanhar into this conversation. Sushant Sareen, what do you make of these Azadi slogans on U.S. campus? Students have a right to protest, but is the U.S. overreacting, sending in riot police and mounted police to crack down on a handful of students? Gaurav, uh, you know, more than a decade back, there was a Hollywood film called The Peacemaker, in which uh, there's one dialogue which has always, you know, stuck in my head. Um, and especially more so after I see what's been happening in U.S. campuses. And George Clooney, uh, you know, looks at this terrorist from Pakistan and he says, who's educated in Harvard, and he says, uh, obviously, uh, half the world's terrorists have been educated by the United States. And quite clearly, it seems that the other half is also going to be you know, uh, taught in U.S. universities. Because the kind of blood curling anti-Semitism that we've seen, we've heard, we've seen on social media is kind of scary, you know, because you think that today it's the Jews. They are, they are, they are uh, on the firing line. Uh, increasingly, we are seeing Hindu students being uh, troubled in American universities. And 
the faculties of these universities seem to be okay with it. They don't yeah. seem to be pushing back. They claim publicly that they are not going to stand for hate speech. But that hate speech is happening by professors. That hate speech. Those professors are organizing events in which hate speech against Hindus, for example, is happening against the Jewish students. We are seeing happening. And if these people are so committed to the cause, then why are they masking their faces? Anna, is, Anna, you know, would you quickly so want to respond? To what you stand for? Anna, would you quickly want to respond to that? I have to push. I have to push back on that. I mean, the reports that are coming out of anti-Semitism on campus are vastly, vastly overblown. I'm a Jewish Jewish student. I have never once felt unsafe on campus. There are Jews inside who have have had like uh, we've been celebrating Passover all week. Um, what you're seeing on the outside is is a gross exaggeration. Um, I've talked to countless Jewish students on campus who feel safe. Um, what's happening outside is a different question, but um, the these reports of anti-Semitic incidents on campus are, in many cases, a complete fabrication and often a lie. I've also talk in, spoken with Indian students, Hindu students, who who are participating here and feel perfectly safe. Um, so I think what you're seeing on the outside is really not reflective of what's happening inside. Fair enough. Of course, government of India has also reacted and responded to what's happening in the United States of America. Um, listen in to Randhir Jaiswal, the spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs. I'll get you more on the story. We've seen reports or several reports on it and have been following related uh, events. In every democracy, there has to be the right balance between freedom of expression sense of responsibility and public safety and order. Democracies in particular should display this understanding in regard to other fellow democracies. After all, we are all judged by what we do at home and not what we say abroad. Uh, we are always in touch with Indian students and as and when there are issues which have to be resolved, we'll look into it. Ambassador Sajjanhar, what do you make of India's response? India telling the United States of America, after all, we're all judged by what we do at home and not what we say abroad. No, that's very right, uh, Gaurav. And uh, I think there have been a number of instances where we have found uh, that uh, there have been uh, several uncalled for remarks coming in from uh, the uh, US uh, government. You know, and I'm not talking only about the media. Media, of course, uh, says uh, what it wants to say M much of it might be factually inaccurate uh, much of it might be their own uh, uh, wishful thinking as to what they would like you know even as far as the elections that are going on in india you know their own perspe perspective etc but uh, on these uh, particular issues as far as uh, you know on even on issues like uh, backsliding of the alleged backsliding of the indian democracy okay. as far as uh, some of the internal developments that take place uh, and which uh, th those developments are entirely according to the law and we have a very independent judiciary and a very robust media so under these circumstances comments coming in from uh, the united states and some of the other democracies i think they are unwarranted and uncalled for fair enough but if but i could come back to the story today the protests that are taking place and the armed police that have been used uh sushant sarin some of the slogans according to the american media and and i want you to weigh in on that al qasim you make us proud kill another soldier there is only one solution intifada is the solution sushant sarin now is this is this just you know maybe one or two slogans being grossly exaggerated as Anna says? You know, so here is the question: If these are one or two slogans which have been grossly exaggerated, and and this has been happening for over a month, now, maybe even longer, what has been the action that has been taken against people who have been shouting these slogans or who have been intimidating Jewish students? Uh, we've seen what has been happening to Hindu students, but let's keep that on the side, right? Whatever and and look, don't give me some self-loathing kind of people who, who are ready to side with the other side and say that okay, fine, we are perfectly fine with these protests. Don't give me that. We've seen enough of that in India as well. Tell me what is the action which has been taken against those people who have been uttering these hateful slogans. Okay. I don't think any action has been taken. Okay. Which is why and many of these seconds, administrations. Anna, you want to quickly respond them. to this? There are slogans, according to reports in Sorry. the U.S. media, that says, kill Jews. 
Yeah. There are some who say that if eighty thousand dollars a I'm, year I'm, is being spent on these courses and classes are being cancelled and going online, that's being unfair to students who paid big money to study. Yeah, I mean, I have been here since Wednesday. I've been staying here through the night every single day. I have not once seen a single sign that says "kill Jews." Um, there have I've, I saw that sign that you mentioned. The person who held it disappeared immediately, and um, the JVP, which is the Jewish Voice for Peace organization that they claim to be a part of, said that they did not recognize the student. So I think, um, I mean, they're also it's a it's a long U.S. tradition of like. Uh, counter protesters infiltrating um, protests to undermine them. I can't speak to that sign in particular, but I can say that the the sentiment of 99 of 99.9% .9 of people in this encampment and on campus is not, is is cooperation with Jewish people. I also think it's really important to distinguish between Judaism and Israel. Um, many the Jews who are in here and my I'm, I'm not participating, but as, yes. as a Jewish person myself, um, I I find that there's a very strong line of uh, division between Jewish identity and Israeli identity. Those are not the Fair same. enough. I um, will I will let that I, be the last yeah. word on this part of the show because I've run out of time. But in the days and weeks ahead, we'll be tracking this story very closely. And the Ministry of External Affairs made it very clear. They are in touch with students, Indian students, who are in the United States of America. We'll be getting you more on that story.